Welcome to another AnyNode tutorial. In this episode, you want to share information on using the SIP Registrar feature. With SIP Registrar and AnyNode, analog devices, SIP telephones, existing telephone systems and gateways can be integrated into a communication environment, even in a cloud-based voice over IP architecture. When a user makes a call from an analog device, the signal and media flow is transmitted to any node via the analog telephony adapter. The SIP registrar allows multiple telephony devices to be registered at the same time and calls can be routed using simple routing. The devices can be combined with user-related manipulation options for phone numbers and complex topologies. For the sake of simplicity, in this tutorial we'll assume the simple end devices such as SIP telephones are being used. We will review the configuration which can be done easily with the help of the AnyNode wizards. We start with an existing scenario. We have a provider node, a Microsoft Teams direct routing node, and a PBX node being expanded by a SIP registrar node. This means that several SIP remote sites or several SIP phones can be integrated into our configuration. Of course, any number of registrar nodes can be created. In our example, we use a user directory to define the credentials and the registrar dial string, and we also use the same user directory for routing. There are two ways to add a SIP registrar. It can be done with the scenario wizard or with a simple add node under the objects. Objects can be used at any time to add individual objects, such as another SIP registrar node, without the automatic creation of a route. The SIP registrar function via the wizard has the advantage that it also creates a corresponding route. We start with the scenario wizard. We are accompanied step by step through the configuration and do not forget any important settings. First, you should give the network controller a unique name. In this case, we adopt the name SIP phone suggested by the wizard. With the interface, you have to select the NIC, which the SIP telephones are to communicate with. You have to make sure that the ports are not already being used by other nodes. These are the local ports on which any node listens. In this case, we take over the ports suggested by the assistant. With the ports, it is particularly important to ensure that the end device that are to register with this node are set so that they also send their registrar message to the corresponding port on any node. We do not yet have a user directory for the subscribers of the SIP telephones, and now we have the opportunity to create a user directory with the create new user directory. The name of this user directory can be chosen freely. If a user directory already exists, we can select it here. Now we define the participant data. In our example, this is SIP user one. We now call the entry SIP user one. Below, we can click on advanced settings for experienced users. We will go into this in more detail after completing this participant entry. With this user data, the subscriber registers with the SIP phone at any node. This also includes the corresponding dial string under which the SIP phone can be reached. We recommend that you use phone numbers in the E164 format. If several SIP endpoints should ring for an incoming call, you can use the default settings where a call is routed to all registered endpoints. Alternatively, the call can be routed randomly to a registered endpoint in the failover group. If this fails, any node should initiate a call to another endpoint in the failover group, as long as the failover group has other endpoints. The SIP status codes are response codes to SIP requests from subscriber devices. Any node will initiate a failover based on this code. If you work with a gateway that only has two lines and these are already occupied, it will send a specific status code and any node then selects the next gateway based on this code. By default, the wizard uses the code 486 in this field. 486 means busy here or the called party is busy. 
In this case, failover to the next endpoint in the failover group is initiated. You can also define SIP status code. The assistant uses 501 to 503 as the default value. The group identifier can be used to group registrations from different users in a failover group. Note that the group identifier distinguishes between upper and lower case. We now see an intermediate overview of our previous entries. Now we go into the advanced settings and open the user record assistant. Normally the user has one phone number in a standard installation. Here you can define several phone numbers, the user part of the address of records, and the phone number under which the SIP subscriber can be reached and is set to the same value. To define entire areas, we have to click on the lower area. Here you can configure the address of records, the identifier with which the phone can log in, and the associated phone numbers. The address of records can be set here. By default, this is also a dial string. However, it is also possible to determine the address of records from a range or to start with a specific prefix. The phone numbers under which the registered subscriber can be reached can then also be specified. For example, the registered subscriber can be reached under a prefix. An example would be phone numbers with the number plus four nine and could be routed to the subscriber. Then settings in the policies are possible. All call information of the session on the way to or from the SIP part of the node is subjected to a set of rules which implements a so-called policy. Since this is only necessary in special cases, we will skip this area. We switch off the advanced settings again and now we see an overview of our previous entries. If a large number of SIP telephones are to be added, it is advisable to import the data using a CSV list, which is often already available in an environment. You can find more information on this in our video tutorial, CSV Import. If the connection is via public IP address, it is strongly recommended to minimize the IP addresses from which the SIP messages are allowed in this whitelist. Since only your subnetwork should be allowed, we check the box, include own subnet. If converting phone numbers into the E164 format is needed, you can do so here. For entering manipulations, we recommend reviewing our tutorial video, Basics of Number Manipulation and Routing. We can now choose the name for our SIP phone nodes. In this example, we'll leave it at the default. The SIP phone's assistant can automatically create a route that leads to the SIP phones or end devices. This route is created at the top of the route table and is therefore used before all other routes. This is also the standard setting in the wizard. Other route options are create the route for the analog phones in the route table at the bottom and give preference to the other routes, or a route where SIP phones can reach each other. There is also the option of not entering a route at all. We can also enter and edit routes in the routing domain after completing the wizard. We can then navigate through the various settings in our newly created SIP phones node. In the routing domain, we see that the assistant has already completed the entry and has selected our SIP phone's user directory as a destination dialing string directory. When there is an incoming call, it checks whether the subscriber is in the directory and then the call is routed accordingly. At this point, we can select two associated directories, the static user directory or the registrar directory. 
The static directory contains all phone numbers in areas that have been created in a user directory. The registrar directory only contains the currently registered participants. So you have to consider whether the call should be routed to the node if a phone is not registered at all. In this case, the call would quickly notice that the phone cannot be reached. Alternatively, if you want to route the call differently in such a case, it makes more sense to use the registrar directory. If the user directory is used as a destination dial string directory in a route, this route only takes effect if the desired destination shows active registration. Otherwise, this route is ignored and the lower routes are searched for a match. As a rule, the call would then be routed to the provider. With a click on commit, we finalize the configuration. The directory created with the users of the SIP telephones can be easily edited or more subscribers added. We find the created directory under directories and with the add command we can add the user SIP phones. The newly added users are then generally routed under the static user directory and can be specified as a destination dial string directory in the route filter. This simplifies the routing. Alternatively, there is the option of calling up and editing directories directly via the scenario wizard. We can quickly check the functionality of our configuration with a look at the AnyNode dashboard. The OK status of the SIP phones node will change from orange to green as soon as a subscriber has successfully registered. Of course, this can also take some time as the remote stations must first register with AnyNode. At the end of this tutorial, we would like to go into some special settings for the registration time from maintaining the registration connection and for latching. We can configure these settings in the navigation in the newly created SIP registrar. The period of validity of a registration in any node can be configured. The standard value is fairly high value of 86,400 seconds or 24 hours. In practice, this can lead to problems if a client itself sends no or a high expired time in the registrar. If the connection between any node and the client is lost, an undefined state can result. In practice, this can happen, for example, when restarting any node for maintenance reasons during an update. In this case, the SIP phones can only be reached again after they have registered with any node. Since any node does not have the option to tell the phones when they, sh they shut down that they have to register again, they have to wait until SIP phones have run out of time and register again. The status would only be correct again when the expiration time has expired. To keep the time as short as possible in this case, it is advisable to set the standard value to a smaller value. A good value is 120 seconds. Under the SIP registrar, we find another important setting to maintain the registration connection. If the end devices are in a network other than any node and no NAT settings are adopted in the configuration of the end devices, we recommend you enable the maintain registration connection and use it as a transport flow function with yes. With this switch, any node can remember the external IP address that were used during the registration and use it for outgoing SIP messages instead of the local IP address that was sent. In this case, it may also make sense to activate latching for the media stream. We find this switch in the navigation under media negotiation. Before we can see this switch, we have to bring detail level to the second highest level. Any node then waits to send RTP data until it has received an RTP packet from the other side for the first time. Only then will any node begin to send RTP data to the sender address. In this case, RTP and RTCP is sent to the source address from which 
previously RTP RTCP was received. It should be noted that any node does not send any data if the other side does not send data first. This option can only be activated if the device on the other side does not act that way. We have now completed this tutorial and thank you very much for your attention. Have a great day.